I got an exciting package in the mail. And it's time for us to start some seeds for our native pollinator garden. Okay, today is an exciting day because today got a fun package in the mail. And let's open it. This is my seed order from Brand New Nursery. Um, um, ooh. So, a couple weeks ago, I shared about seed shopping for native plants, and I got a couple really exciting things in the mail. The first thing is this beginner's collection. There's three types of seeds purple prairie clover, purple coneflower, wild bergamot, black eyed Susan, little blue stem, and smooth blue aster. So we're gonna open this up and see if we can find out which of these we should be starting indoors versus outside. Oh, look at these, these are so pretty. Okay, Clover is the first one, let's see. It says it gets to a height of about two feet likes medium to dry soil, full sun to part shade, blooms July through September. Germination code A. Seed should germinate on sowing in a warm location. Ah, okay, it says, okay, there's a fun little note <laughs> on this clover which says, the thimble-headed fuchsia blooms attract many native beads, including the endangered rusty patch bumblebee. Once the flowers are spent, the delicate foliage remains attractive throughout the season. As a legume, this plant harbors beneficial bacteria that aid in the overall health of the soil. And in honor of that, today I'm wearing my rusty patch bumblebee earrings. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So I think I'm going to have to just do a little bit of research online about how to germinate these seeds the best. Um, what I think I'm going to do today, if I have time, or maybe tomorrow, is I've got some of these old seed trays, which are like reused from like a something that was purchased from a nursery. They're very dusty and dirty and getting all over my clothes. But um, I'm just going to rinse these out and reuse these because they've got a big wide space. And I know that for a lot of these native flowers, there's something that is going to need to grow for a long time. If I'm starting it indoors, it's going to need to grow for a long time, then be transplanted outside. Possibly even some things might do well to just overwinter in these trays and then be planted in a final landscape location next season. Um, so I don't know. I'm probably going to start some now. Um, to see if I can get any flowers for this spring. And if I don't have great success with that, I'll probably sow them again sometime in the fall, leave them outside all winter, and then see what comes up in the spring. So that's the plan. We'll plant them now and we'll plant them again. <laughs> okay, next is the smooth blue aster. Um, Produces a plethora of lavender flowers in the fall months, providing the silvery checker spot, a place to host its caterpillars and many other pollinators, a last chance to nectar before winter cold sets in. True to its name, the blue-green foliage is smooth, blending color and texture interests to the garden. And it says bloom in August through October. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> little, little blue sim. An iconic prairie grass whose name stems from its blue tinge leaves. As one season plant, it actually grows during the summer months. Leaves turn a coppery crimson in the fall, offsetting white fluffy tufts of seeds on the stem ends. It's a larval host for many kinds of skipper moths and provides shelter for hibernating queen bumblebees. This one gets to about three feet tall and likes medium, medium dry or dry uh, soil. So I think this one is going to be really cool. Um, I definitely feel like it's going to just add some texture and beauty and some variety to the garden. 
um, and I'm really excited for this one. So this one, um, like the past two that I mentioned, the Smooth Blue Aster and the Purple Gray Clover, um, also need, also say this germination code A on the back, so I'm gonna have to check the Prairie Blue website for more information on how to germinate the seeds. Um, up next, we've got Wild Bergamot um, or Monarda. This is perfect for the beginner's garden. It says, these native seeds do not need overwintering or pre-treatment to germinate. These lovely lavender flowers bloom profusely offset by aromatic verdant leaves. Also called bee balm, it is an absolute pollinator magnet, attracting numerous species of bees and butterflies in its long bloom time, tolerant of most soil and sun conditions. Flows from July to September and gets to be about four feet tall. So that's exciting. I love a seed that is easy to germinate. <laughs> so this one, i um, definitely excited about growing. I did have this one in my garden last year. Um, I don't remember where we got the seeds from, but we had a, a version of bee balm and it did really well. Uh, next up, one of my absolute favorites, Black Eyed Season. You might be familiar with this one as well, also called Rebe Rebecca. These cherry yellow flowers. Um, so yeah, you're probably familiar with this one. Um, this one says germination code C. The seeds germinate after 30 days of cold, moist stratification. So this might be one I need to cold stratify in the fridge because we sort of missed the window of being able to get it outside in time for that cold weather. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit of research on that and get back to you about how we should start this one. Purple coneflower, um, Echinacea purpurea. So this is a really exciting plant. This iconic prairie plant has blooms that range from rosy pink to magenta to ruby red, easy to grow and maintain. Once established, just sit back and breathe in the honey sweet fragrance the flowers release while basking in the sunshine. Nature's beauty simplified. I love that echinacea is also one that you can use for various different medicinal purposes as well. Um, I'm just so excited. I think it's beautiful. I love that it is helpful for the pollinators. I'm thinking I want this in several spots in my garden. I probably want it in my beautiful landscaped areas and I probably would also add it to sort of a tea and herb garden as well that I'm hoping to plant. Um, and ah, very exciting. That is gonna be a really fun collection. So let's quickly go and do a little looking on how to germinate these seeds. Oh, look, they even included something. Okay, germination codes and seed starting basics for new plants. Ha ha ha. Okay. Uh, germination code A, seed species that will germinate without pre-treatment. Okay, wild, wild bergamot, um, let's see, purple bone flower. See, that's funny because I think, isn't that the one that said that it needed cold stratification? No, that one said A. Okay, now the black eyed Susan, that is the one that said that it needed. Okay, this one was the C. Okay. Periodic watering is helpful to establish seedlings. Native perennial plants can be slow growing and adequate at root system with Supporting top growth is first priority. Full flowering happens once a mature plant is established. I'm really not expecting most of these to get the most beautiful flowers this year. Um, except for the, the wild bergamot, because we grew that last year and it did flower the first year. Um, the other ones, I'm gonna put them in these trays. We'll see how vigorous we can get them to grow before it's time to plant them outside. And if they're looking, you know, <laughs> not that, awesome i will probably just leave them in their tray to size up a little bit and plant them out next year um 
do, 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 seed starting. Okay, Dermation Code C, cold moist stratification. Hey, recommend putting sand into a bowl. Oh my God, this looks like a lot of work. Okie dokie. So we're going to experiment with some cold stratification and we'll see how that goes. You can see how confident I seem about doing that. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Um, to be fair, and it does say that here too, most of these things, as they are native plants, you could just put them outside and they would germinate in their own time. <laughs> and if you are very patient and you don't really come care what comes up where, you could just mix all your seeds together and throw them in a patch and hope and pray something comes up. And for me, I want to have a little bit more control over it. I want to create some beautiful clusters of different species to give a more unique, vibrant landscape look as opposed to just sort of a wild prairie look. Um, I like the wild prairie look, but for my backyard, I want a little bit more, um, a little bit more sculpted. Okay, so with that, let's take our Black Eyed Susan to the side and we will practice our cold stratification after I locate some paper towels <laughs> or coffee filter. Um, and Okay, let's open up this one. These beginner ones, because they're all <clears throat> simple to start, or probably the first ones we're going to start today. So this is our bird benefit collection. Um, doo -doo -doo. And in here we have Columbine, white wild indigo, partridge bee, more purple coneflower, showy sunflower, and cup plant. Okay, this is our Columbine, which is I'll read you that beautiful script because they are really good at making their seed packets. Best seen from below, where the origami fortune teller style intricacy is more apparent, butter yellow, petals layer over and tuck into coral overcoats, creating deep, elongated wells to feed hungry hummingbirds. One of the first plants to bloom in the spring, this hardy and versatile plant brings much watered color to shade gardens. So, ooh, that's interesting. Okay, so this likes um full sun part sun to shade so this is a plant that could go in a lot of different spaces in the yard which is exciting to me it likes medium to me medium dry soil and blooms from april to june and gets to about two feet tall so we are going to put this one probably in a couple different spots um and let's see what is the germination code c oh yeah more of that cold stratification okay we're gonna we're gonna be learning some things <laughs> um probably most of these are gonna want that yeah 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 all these a c Woo. okay so maybe we'll start with the beginners <laughs> and then we will um do some cold stratification with the other ones okay Okay, what was the next one? Up next, Partridge Pea. Look how pretty that is. Also known as the sensitive plant, these leaves will slowly flap together when touched. Um, interspersed through unique foliage, the lemon yellow flowers with maroon stamens. Um, this annual will surprise you with a new location each year. self sowing burgundy seed pods that fall provide interest and nutrition for many birds. Okay, so this is an exciting one. Pollinators love it. It's about two feet high, blooms from July to September. Okay, 
partridge pea. That one's pretty. Um, wild white indigo. Um, towering white spires. of charcoal gray stems and blue green leaves, a favorite with bumblebees, skippers, and sulfur butterflies. After first frost, the foliage turns black, providing stark contrast and architectural interest into the late fall and winter. Uh, well, seeds need cold stratification and scarification. Oh boy, fun, 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 okay. Um, another pack of purple coneflower. We're gonna plant lots of this because I love it. Showy sunflower. So this is like a native um, version of a sunflower. Vibrant yellow flowers. Okay, I'm not gonna read this, but it's cute. It's gonna get tall. It's gonna be five feet tall. Blooms July through September. likes the sunny, dry spot, and if that is conditions are met, can quickly overtake less tenacious plants. So this is one that we're gonna have to control a little bit, not let it get too out of hand. But if there's like a big space in the yard that I need to fill up, it feels like this is gonna be like a really, a really good one to take up a good amount of space. Like 30 days of cold moist stratification. Okay, hot plant. Name for the unique way large leaves fit and flare from a squared stem, seamlessly fanning out to form deep wells. These leaf cups are able to hold water. <clears throat> Bright yellow flowers burst open above these structures, pollinate our beacons, nectar, pollen, seed, and water to sip or even bathe in. This plant has it all. Vigorous and prolific, cup plant is best in large prairie planting. Smaller sites with less competition will be overwhelmed. Um, so yeah, this is one we're going to have to manage, but I think is going to be one that's just going to be so beautiful and is going to be able to fill up a lot of space in a short amount of time to really give a transformation and a just beauty to the garden. Um, also likes 30 days of cold moist stratification. So we have got some work to do in our learning about seed starting. <laughs> um, we can do it. All right, let's get it started. I'm gonna get this big fake palm plant out of the way. It was giving life. It was giving life in a time that this room only had dirt and darkness, but now it's time for flowers to grow and I need that space. Um, so, that. this back to the roots organic potting mix i don't know that it's the best potting mix of all time but it was what was available to me it was fairly cheap and it was heat free so just checking checking the boxes i'll let you know how it does Thank you. 
try and rehydrate the soy a little bit. Gotta feel up the gardener before you deal with the gardener, right? Okay. One of the reasons I'm especially excited to be starting some native flowers this year is that this is gonna be my first year in a new garden. I recently moved into a new house and you know the overwhelm that comes with that and all the many, many projects that you are trying to handle. But I feel like planting these native perennial flowers is one of those things that I'm gonna start it now and then I'm going to be able to reap the benefits for years and years and years to come and just enjoy seeing beautiful things in my garden and it's one of those things that like you just have to get started and know that you're going to have to add to it and change it and grow it over time and it's not going to be perfect the first year and you may not get all the flowers you want in the first year but that's okay. It's all part of the journey. It's all part of the process. Learning is a huge part of this for me. Learning what works in my soil, learning what works in my region, learning what things I like to grow. So we're going to start with the things that are easiest to self seed today and then we'll come back another day and practice our cold stratification um, I think this is going to be perfect I think I'm gonna have just enough soil to fill one seed tray Packing them in just a little bit. Let's start wild bergamot. I know what you're thinking. I see the water spilling out of the bottom of my tea tray. We're just gonna roll with it. I ordered some bottom trays and they should be coming in the mail soon. I do not have them yet. So, just gonna have to work with what we get. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I truly believe we can all make a difference for nature by working little by little to incorporate native plants into our landscaping. Let me know in the comments if you're planning to add any pollinator gardens or other native plantings to your yard this year. If you'd like to hear more about how I was able to find native plants and seeds appropriate for my region, you can check out my video, Rewilding My Suburban Backyard Searching for Native Plants, which I will link here in the cards and in the description box below. 
This year, I have some big dreams for my garden. I'm hoping to add some raised beds for my fruit and veggies, start composting, and planting more native plants for my landscaped areas to transform my backyard into a haven for local wildlife and a place of bounty and beauty for me to enjoy with my friends and family. If you want to follow along on my journey, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when my next video is released. Until next time, friend. Happy gardening. Bye.